let's get one thing straight. When it comes to Salty Crafter, she has no ideas what personal bubble is. So anytime I get a new craft kit, she likes to peer over my shoulder and uh, get out of my space! Get out! Shoot! And so today we're going to be taking a look at Matto Clay from Amazon, which is supposed to be a, a young person kind of kit. But what I want to do today is test whether or not these kits have a low expectation because it's low quality, or as a, as a grown-up, can I actually do something a little more elevated in terms of skill level? So that's what we're going to be checking out because they have low expectations. Matto Clay, we bring to you my little Little Animals Modeling Clay Kit featuring Dark Dog from the Underworld or Butt Crack Bernie the Hippo. And don't forget, we have a crab that looks like a shocked Pikachu meme. And if that's not good enough, we also have our little version of the Eeyore Unicorn. And I absolutely love this little crocodile thing because I'm pretty sure most of us have been in a situation where you want to smile but you're not sure what's going on so you do this. This kit costs $8.99 on Amazon. So even though my expectations are here, I still want to try it. So we get eight bright colors, 18 screw pins, that's quite a bit, and three shaping tools. I'm pretty excited about that as well. One of the things that I find really weird is that it says extra instruction booklet. Technically, this is a kit. It should come with booklets. I don't, I, Oh, salt. Let's dance today. This is not a review. I will not be salty. Or will I? I might. All right, time to see what we get inside. Here's what we get inside. Four blocks of large clay in the primary color, co co colors, English, cooperate, and white. And four blocks of the tinier colors, black, purple, orange, green. Oh, that is fluorescent. Oh, too much light. I cannot see. I guess we'll, we'll go up here. Kind of knife edge, pointy, another knife, smoothing. This is pretty good. This is kind of a, like a, a texture tip. For, for your sculpting pleasure. <laughs> and a scoopy kind of tool. Wow, this is really fluorescent. It's it's hard it's hard to see. We also get screw pins and a fully colored instructional manual. This manual is much nicer than some of the more expensive kits that I've seen, but that is not all. When you go on their website, they have actual tutorials, not just the PDF version, but also the online version, and a mini video. I mean, look, oh, it's a cricket. There you go, that's a better angle. So if we wanted to make this dude, you can download it, watch it, or just follow the instructions on the actual website. Oh, was that? Okay, auto start, sure. Don't be like Netflix! These are the shapes you'll need. Roll up the blue cylinder. Well, the website doesn't want me to pause. There we go, that took a while. So as you can see, the tutorials are pretty straightforward. They're nicely filmed and nicely voiced over. It's not too fast, not too slow. It just seems like for a beginner, it's probably the right speed. So far, I'm pretty impressed for a $9 kit. And it takes, it takes quite a bit to make Salty uh, impressed. Alright, first things first, let's get to know our enemy. I mean our material. Wait, is that mold? I have no idea what this is. But I'm hoping it's not mold. Alright, first thing. It smells... <coughs> oh, I get it. it. Smells a little plasticky. And this over here is... Not mold. It's another piece of clay stuck inside. Thank the baking gods. So first impression is that it does have a little bit of a wet feel to it. And how does it squish? 
it has a firm feel to it, but it's not too soft, but it is pretty sticky. It reminds me a lot of the different kinds of clay that you can get from China because that's just what it is. They're all pretty much the same kind of clay. So, is it going to be easy getting details? No. Is it fun to work with when you have a little bit of experience? No. Is it decent for entry level? Yeah, it, it could work if you're new. So the first project I want to tackle just to kind of get a feel for the clay is going to be this burb. I love burbs because I have my own little burb and it is pretty straightforward. So I'll get a good feel of this clay. So as it said, I made a little flat ball, turned it into a kind of triangular shape, flattened one of the ends so it looks like a tail, and then added the eyes. My burb wanted to say hello, right? But at this point of sculpting, I'm starting to realize that this clay is really going to be a challenge to work with. Everything sticks to your fingers. Right, Burb? Right? I'm asking you a question. Answer me. You know what it is? He's scared of this, right? So I'm starting to get memories of exactly how this clay feels. It's not really pleasant because again, it's quite sticky. Oh no, that looks like it has quite the handsome jaw. <laughs> oh no. Oh chicken, who's done what to you? Is, don't interrupt me. So I have to say this is probably my best work of art. Right, Burp? Wow, that's rude. Do you think you can do better? I don't think so. You're just a big liar! Stop lying! Nobody knows that you're lying except me. Can you stop it? had the best of luck with experimental clay such as with the dollar store clay I tried to make a lava type dragon and she cracked everywhere and the top most voted name for her was crackle you grains voted crackle the dragon thank you next when I did a craft with a wood dust type clay it also cracked a little bit of everywhere I don't know what it is with me and cracks not those cracks Get your mind out of the gut! But I'm really hoping that this time with this experimental clay, I can get something somewhat decent. So I'm going to go ahead and use the two colors I have the most of to create a base for a water type dragon. Wish me luck, because I don't know how this is going to go. By the way, what is your favorite element? I know in addition to the main ones, which is earth, wind, water, and fire, there are other ones like wood and metal and, and so on and so forth. All of the elements are accepted in my question. Even the Pokemon type ones, go for it, go dorky. I would have to say that my favorite is probably fire, because it matches my personality. And so the biggest challenge for me is going to be using only the material provided in this kit. I could technically use my own wires, my own paint, and all that stuff to make it a lot prettier, but I just want to see what we can make with what's provided. And since we're going with a C-type dragon, we're definitely going to be staying away from wings, but more focused on fin-type limbs. I also want to embellish her with a lot more of the underwater-type feel. Let me know, if you were making a water dragon, what kind of look would she or he have? What kind of elements would you put right on top? All right, I didn't like that fin, just scrap that fin. It just wasn't flowy enough, so I feel like I need to make it a little more flowy type-ish so that it looks more mystical. Ooh. 
Hear me gear, this knife is nightmare. Come on, give me precise work. Oh my god. There we go. Not so precise, is it? Huh? Eh. Oh no! I just realized I cheated! I'm sorry! <coughs> oh, the salt is coming up for me now! Yeah, I totally cheated. And I did it without even realizing it. The only reason and the only way I can get a flat surface like this that is even is because I used my pasta machine to flatten it out. That's cheating, right? Yep. So for the second part of the fin, I'm going to go in absolutely manually. I could technically try to use the tools they gave us, but they're not exactly round, so that's, that's out of the question. the head I want it to look a little more delicate I don't want it to be rustic and and hardcore like my stone dragon because my stone dragon kind of looks like Alphonse from Full Metal Alchemist so I want this one to have a kind of dainty seahorse type not type not nozzle not nostril not snout snout that's the word I got it Meanwhile, let me be very clear, you can see my fingerprints over here and specks of dust and goodness knows what. Probably cat fur, at least I hope so. A little bit of everywhere. This clay wants to take everything. One of the things I'm most nervous about is usually when I put the head of a creature onto a body, there's some kind of adhesive like liquid clay. But in this case, I'm only going to be using the screw pins to hope and pray to the, the, the clay god that they don't betray me and that the head falls off when we're trying to bake it. Do I have a soft spot for nuts? Magikarp, you bring your butt back here! So as I'm saying, do I have a soft spot for not so smart creatures? The answer is yes. So I'm definitely taking inspiration to go ahead and make those little whiskery type feeler type things on the dragon too. Oh gosh. All right, so usually, usually, when I'm trying to make the eyes, I use a rounded tool, but the closest thing I have to a rounded tool is this semi-pointy thing, this one. So I'm going to attempt making the crevice for the eyes, but who knows, let's, let's give it a try. You can see how sticky the clay is. It's just kind of holding on. There we go. Oh, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And my fingerprints are just everywhere. All right, since we have kind of a texture over here, I feel like I want to do a little bit of a texture on top of the nostril, nozzle. Snout. That's kind of okay. I'm living with it. While trying to put the eyes in, I have to admit it was so sticky that getting small details was close to impossible. Because every time you put a piece of clay, it just wants to leave with your hands. And now for the remainder of the piece, I'm going to go ahead and put some coral decorations in the back as though it's kind of just swimming through the ocean, landing, letting critters take refuge, and then swimming off again. Here she is so far, but we all know what's coming up next. We need to bake her. Otherwise, this clay will not get hard. And I'm actually pretty worried for the head. I'm hoping that it doesn't fall off of the, the, the screw pins, but for that, we have no control. So what we gotta do is put our hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore. Please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff!
a little longer than a few minutes later. By the way, Grains, this here is a reminder that the baking gods are not our friends. The first thing I ever ask for is, let's hear it again, please, please protect, protect my, piece my piece from piece cracks. From crack. Yes, cracks. However, when we look at this piece, for some reason, there are random cracks everywhere. So am I disappointed? Yes. Have these evermore gods forsaken me? Yes. Could it just be the clay the problem? Possibly. So now the question is, how do I feel about this piece? Well, I, I have to say, I mean, look at my face. I'm not that happy with it. And just to be clear, I know how to sculpt dragons. Although this clay is, I would have to say, absolutely fantastic for beginners, if you try to do bigger projects, you're most likely going to get cracks like this one. One of the ways you can remedy it is by putting a piece of foil paper on the inside, which means that this piece is technically not as successful as it could have been. However, our derpy chicken has no cracks whatsoever, which technically makes it my best artwork for today. And I'm sticking to it. Oh, another thing is, look at the eye on the other side. Yeah, just let's freeze it right there. One side looks fine, the other one looks like it has some kind of infection. Not cool. Because the clay keeps sticking to my fingers. If you grains are interested in seeing me transform some of my failed sculptures with the actual materials I use, make sure that you vote in the iCard section. This week's shoutouts go to Mina Habibi, Kavita Sajdeva, LH, Dragon Lover, Random Draws 934, Monochrome Witchress, Margezi, and Kawaii Devil 13. Remember, if you want to shout out my video, don't forget to hashtag Nerdification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release, or hashtag NerdyCrafter on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook anytime with any of your creations. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.